Hey guys, this is the sports nerd Brad Walker. This is a special presentation of the Walker Report. Again, it wasn't yesterday, guys. We're doing the Thanksgiving holiday. So the sports nerd decided he was going to get off work early today and come home and do it on Black Friday. So thank you for joining me. This is the Walker Report, part of In the Zone Sports Radio, which is part of NGSC Sports. Remember the website, it's ngscsports.com. Log on to ngscsports.com for all your current sports content. NGSC Sports, where we never stop. The show is also sponsored by Alicia Spells and Things. Check out the Facebook page, Alicia Spells and Things, where you will find home decor you will not be able to resist at prices anybody can afford. Check out the pebbles and stools of your favorite sports teams. Maybe you want to set for your kid's favorite character or movie character. You can also get full body and neck pebbles as well. Log on to ngsbsports.com. Go to Alicia Spells and Things tab on the home page to complete your order. This show is also sponsored by Amore Pizzeria at 9700 6th Street North in Pinellas Park. Here are their, uh, my buddy Joey owns the place here, are their weekly specials, guys. It is on Sundays, they have a 12 ounce DeMonico steak for $13.99. On Mondays, it's chicken Alfredo for $7.99. Taco Tuesdays on Tuesdays, guys, three for five beef or chicken. Wacky Wednesdays, 60 cent wings on Wednesday. And $2 Amber Block at Shock Top on Dread. On Thursdays, they feature two one-quarter pound hot dogs and fries for $6.99. And today, guys, on Friday, it's all you can eat fish for $99. Let us know you heard it right here on the Walk Report and receive 10% off your total. Also, guys, use the Slice app. It is available on Google Play and through the iPhone App Store. This is I'm also sponsored by my friend Renee at creating ZenSpaces.com. ZenSpaces, is the local choice in St. Petersburg, Florida for house cleaning, organization, decluttering, and pet sitting. It's about finding the peace within you and adding comfort to your life. And again, guys, if you want to join me, the number to join me is 605-562-0444. The show ID is 4366391. Again, that number is 605-562-0444. The show ID is 4366391. Uh, the topics today, guys, I'm basically um, going to talk about the UFC. There's a couple of uh, interesting stories um, in hockey. If you guys are watching me on Facebook Live, you noticed that I did move the microphone. It's now on me instead of on the side. Uh, I decided to do that yesterday. I'm um, going to talk about MLB, NFL, college football. A big college football weekend coming up tomorrow. A lot of the rivals happening tomorrow. Some. Gator and Knowles people calling in later in the show to talk about why their team is going to win. My man Adam, who's listening right now, is a big Michigan fan. I'm going to get his opinion on tomorrow's game between Michigan and Ohio State. I'll get him on later on as well. But let me go ahead and get into my show. Um, these were stories. I think I, this story broke yesterday, guys. This is by uh, Timothy Rapp. Um, if you guys are UFC fans um, and you're wondering when Conor McGregor was coming back, well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, he will be coming back um, January 18th. So the month after next, um, he will be returning to face Donald Cerrone. Uh, he signed uh, to fight him. Um, it will be uh, on January 18th at UFC 246. Um, he has not fought since the Kahib fight where he got what he lost. Um, so he will be uh, fighting him. McGregor remains as one of USC's most controversial fighters, both for his brash and outspoken personality and his legal history outside the octagon. Uh, three takeaways from fighting at Walter Wade. The deal for him to face Cowboy took a lot longer than expected. He's aware that there's a strong chance he won't face the winner of Kahib versus Tony in 2020. He's got an eye on Diaz or Mondas Ball. So those would be interesting if he fights uh, either one of those guys. But that was a quick tidbit today that I picked up about Conor McGregor. Um, if you guys are USC fans, you know who Conor McGregor is. He's been having a lot of um, outside the ring issues as of late. Uh, but he's coming back as we speak. Again, it was just announced that he will be fighting in January at uh, UFC 246. So. That's pretty damn cool um, that he's back. I mean, 
I happen to be a fan of his, even though I know he's got into legal trouble outside the ring. Um, but he's a good fighter when it comes to inside the octagon. So it should be interesting to see um, what he has uh, moving forward. Um, guys, if you didn't notice, there were three NFL games. I hate to jump into jump into this, but excuse me, there were three NFL games yesterday. Um, in case you missed it, the Bears beat the Lions on a, in a comeback. At the end of the game, the Buffalo Bills absolutely dismantled the Dallas Cowboys and the Saints uh, won last night against Atlanta. Um, so that is that. Um, but the, there was reasons that I'm talking about the NFL. I wanted to get into uh, some stories and the power rankings before, obviously, before yesterday's games. But I'll go re go back through the power rankings and I'll figure this out. But uh, this article, guys, came out uh, three days ago uh, from NFL.com, and it releases the 25 semifinalists for the Class of 2020 Hall of Fame. So here are the names, guys, that are on that list. And go. And you guys can agree with me or not agree with me what you want to do, um, who you think uh, deserves to be in the Hall of Fame um, or not. Um, but the first one, guys, is Steve Atwater. You don't know who Steve Atwater is, just uh, Google Atwater and Okoye, and you'll figure out who Steve Atwater is. One of the hardest hitting safeties um, in the NFL. Um, he played with the Broncos and the Jets. This is the ninth time he's been a semifinalist. Um, the next guy is Carl Banks, an outstanding linebacker for the Giants, um, Redskins, Browns, and this is the first time he's been a semifinalist. Rondé Barber, uh, the cornerback safety for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Guys, this is one of the huge reasons why the Bucs won the Super Bowl in 2002 because of Rondé Barber. This is the third time he's been a semifinalist. Uh, tackle Tony Baselli of the Jacksonville Jaguars from Houston Texans. This is the fifth time, one of the greatest offensive tackles in the game. Um, Isaac Bruce, wide receiver for the L.A. St. Louis Rams and San Francisco 49ers. This is the sixth time he's on the list. Uh, Leroy Butler, another hard-hitting safety for the Green Bay Packers. This is the third time he has been on the list. Um, Alan Fanica, guard, he's an offensive guard uh, for the Steelers, Jets, and Cardinals. This is the fifth time he's been listed as a semifinalist. Torrey Holt of the St. Louis Rams and Jaguars. This is the sixth time he's a finalist. Uh, Steve Hutchinson, guard for the Seahawks, Vikings, and Titans. This is the third time he has been on the list. Uh, Edger and James, the running back for the Indianapolis Colts, Arizona Cardinals, and Seahawks. This is the sixth time he's on the list. Uh, Rondé Barber's teammate, John Lynch, safety uh, from 93 to 2003 for the Bucks and the Broncos. This is the eighth time he's been listed down. Um, Clay Matthews, now this is senior, not junior. This is Clay Matthews' dad. Uh, this is the fourth time he's been on the list with the Browns and the Falcons. Sam Mills, linebacker, Saints and Panthers. This is the third time he's been on the list. Troy Palomalu, the great safety for the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is the very first time. Simeon Rice, another uh, Buccaneer that's on this list. He played with the Cardinals, Bucks, Broncos, and Colts. This is the second time. Uh, Richard Seymour, who played with the Patriots and the Raiders. Um, is, this is the third time he's been on the list. Um, Punt returner and wide receiver Steve Tasker played with the Oilers most of his years were with the Buffalo Bills. This is the seventh time he's been on the list. Uh, running back Fred Taylor, a lot of Gator fans know who he is with the Jaguars and the Patriots. This is the first time. Linebacker Zach Thomas of the Miami Dolphins uh, and the Cowboys. This is the second time. Heinz Ward, the great wide receiver for the Steelers. This is the fourth time he's been on the list. Ricky Waters, the running back for the Niners, Eagles, and Seahawks. This is the first time that he's on the list. Reggie Wayne, the wide, great wide receiver for the Colts, is also the first time. Patrick Lewis, linebacker for the 49ers, he's also first on the list. Darren Woodson, the great safety for the Cowboys, this is the fourth time he's been on the list. And Brian Young, defensive tackle for the San Francisco 49ers, this is also the first time he's been on the list. Um... Board recently passed for that suspended the Hall of Fame selection committee bylaws for the class 2020 cycle. This measure intends to honor the NHL centennial celebration through a special centennial class, be comprised of 20 members in 2020, 
The group will include five modern players to come from the list announced today and to 10 seniors, uh, players who have been retired for more than 25 seasons, three contributors, and two coaches. So that's how they're going to determine, guys, who gets in this year. But that is, in my opinion, guys, I read all those names. I don't see how not one or all of them make the Hall of Fame. There's not one of them on there that I don't think should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, again, I got to single-handedly watch a lot of those players growing up. So, I mean, I can tell you that they, uh, they all deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. Yes, they all deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, one more story before I get to the power rankings. Again, this, the power rankings, guys, will be before yesterday's games. Uh, I forgot that probably should have printed them out today. But if you haven't been – if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, you haven't noticed that Mason Rudolph will not be starting this Sunday. Instead, they're going to start Devlin Duck Hodges, which is their third-string quarterback. Uh, he is replacing Mason Rudolph against the Cleveland Browns this Sunday at 1 o'clock. Um, now, uh, according to Coach Mike Tomlin, he said that uh, Mason Rudolph did, has not killed us, but he's going with a fresh move because he's making the move because the team's impatient fan base. Um, after Rudolph's confidence, right? Dinner, yeah, so he's looking, he's making the move, guys, for the sake of the fan base in Pittsburgh. Um, they're impatient. They're waiting to win. Um, this team has a shot at making the playoffs. Is Devlin the answer? I, I, I don't know. Uh, Tomlin did go on to say that he was looking for a spark, and the spark came from Hodges, um, not from Rudolph. Uh, so this this is something else. Um, but again, guys, uh, if you are a Steelers fan, you're going to have a third string quarterback starting this week and Devlin Hodges, not Mason Rudolph. And of course, guys, if you remember the last time the Browns and the Steelers got together. Maybe probably one of the most horrendous plays I've ever seen on a football field where. um a you had a player hit another player with his own helmet. Um, it's unfortunate that that happened. Will there be um, any kind of um, you know payback in this game? We'll have to wait and see. I mean, I, I can't really tell you. I, I would think that the Steelers would not be that stupid. Um, to retaliate because they lost that game. You know, the Browns won that football game, guys. It's not like the Steelers won that football game. The Browns won that football game. And, of course, it was overshadowed by this incident. This Sunday, they, they, they meet, rematch. Um, I can't see anything. I know it will be probably one of the most heavily watched football games to see if something does. Um come out of it uh i just to me i think the nfls will be keeping a, a closeful eye i also don't think you're going to see anything out of the ordinary again um, it would be very very you know in my opinion asinine to do anything i think it would be stupid for the steelers to do anything um that stupid and retaliate i think it's dumb I think how you retaliate if I'm the Pittsburgh Steelers is win the football game. Just beat them because they beat you already this year. You know, win the football game. Don't worry about what happened with, with the quarterback and all that. Win the football game. Go out there and beat, beat the Browns. Don't worry about your retaliation or whatever. Just go out there and win the football game. All right, guys, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and go through um, – the power rankings again guys these power rankings were before yesterday's football games so bear with me these are kind of old maybe some of these are still the way they are but with the six teams that played yesterday there could have been some moves this is by dan hansus um, who's an nfl writer um, he has this these are his rankings uh, he currently has the san francisco 49ers at number one uh, the baltimore ravens at number two the New England Patriots at three, the Seattle Seahawks at four, the Saints at five, the Vikings at six, the Packers at seven, the Chiefs at eight. 